Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is CKT Chaotic. Today I'll be reading I'm the Queen in This Life, episode 7 to 8. And guys, I'm on the road to hopefully gaining 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. It's currently April. So if you guys can, I would greatly appreciate it if you guys can subscribe, share, like, and comment on this video. And of course, share my other reads if you guys enjoyed the way I you know, react and read these webtoons. So we're almost there. I'm currently at 6,000 subscribers, so I'm so excited. But if I can get anywhere close to 10,000, I will be ecstatic. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Ooh. According to the sacred scripture, Saint Gon of Chesarche is re revered for his two acts of marty martyrdom. As his first death as a martyr, he died a lonesome death, shunned by all those around him. However, he performed the miracle of resurrection and sacrificed himself once more to prevent a great cat catastrophe from befalling the realm. It was only then that Gon of Jersharche was praised by the people. The nobles of San Carlo enjoy church sermons that tell the fable of Saint Gon's second sacrifice. But today's sermon largely addressed his first sacrifice. In the language of Gallico Kingdom, Queen Margaret's homeland, I don't understand a single word. <laughs> it's probably what they're thinking. Of course, Lucrezia hasn't an ounce of refinement in her entire body. And Isabella has only begun to learn Gallica recently. So that would be Queen Margaret. I've only ever seen her in portraits in my past life. But I can tell who she is by the dignified air she exudes. And that is how Saint Gon of Jersharche sacrificed himself for the salvation of the flawed human species, spoken in Calica. I often ponder how he felt as he sacrificed his entire life for the immoral and selfish people of this world. And yet, the haves must always strive to use their wealth, status, and devout faith for the benefits of the have-nots. This is a kind of virtue that man was not born with, but must pursue nonetheless. Amen. 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 They're whispering about. Uh, how wonderful that Her Majesty requested a sermon about Gone of Jersarche's Martyr Dome Mother. That's one of my favorite passages from the scripture. <laughs> yes, quite. Aren't you just glad to have studied Gallica? What was your favorite part of today's service? Well, I utterly adored the part about Saint Gon's second sacrifice. It sounds like she only understood the word sacrifice. But today's sermons address the first sacrifice, not the second. After St. Gon's death, the townsfolk rushed out to the streets to lament and wail. Can you imagine how you feel to have everyone mourn your death? What a thrill that must be. Surely she ought to be grateful for the saintly sacrifice, not envious of the saint's fame. Just how old is that young lady? She acts like a, such an immature child. Well, this certainly won't do. She'll make a laughingstock of our entire family at this rate. Well, my favorite part was the act of courage that Saint Gon demonstrated. Oh. As hers, despite the fear he must have felt in the face of certain death. 
Oh, how thoughtful for you, for one so young. She must be a devout believer. That ought to stop any unsavory rumors about the faith of Cardinal de Mare's family. Phew. Now, shall we adjourn to the lobby for some refreshments? So, that's Cardinal Middle Child. Has knowledge of Gallica. I'm the Queen in this life. Episode 7. These fine ladies are the wife and daughter of Cardinal de Mare. I invited them today to make their acquaintance. Ahead of the upcoming state mass. Please, take a seat. I must say, Miss Isabella, I admire your gorgeous dress. To think that I would meet that woman once again. And you know what they say about bastards born to concubines. They're the fruits of an unholy union. Take it back! You may say what you want about me. But do not ever speak of Chesare that way again. <laughs> may I inquire as to your dressmaker of choice? Oh, it was made by our family seamstress, ma'am. Oh my, such fine work she done. I was hoping to acquire a similar dress for my daughter, but it's a shame that it wasn't made to be bought. <laughs> I'm sure our seamstress would be happy to make another. We'll be only too happy to accommodate you, Countess Marquise. <laughs> now, now, that would be hardly be fair when it seems she hasn't had the time to sew one for your middle daughter. I couldn't possibly impose on her any further. In fact, upon closer inspections, your two daughters couldn't be dressed any more differently. What a flagrant display of pettiness. She may be an illegitimate child, but she's no less a member of the Cardinal's family. A proper lady would take good care of all the children of the household. This is highly unusual indeed. What a shame. No child should be blamed for her parents' transgressions. If I may, madam. My little sister has been suffering from all ill health and only recently returned from conval convalescence in the countryside. Hold on, let me Google that word. Convalescence. Convalescence in the countryside. That is such an interesting word. But convalescence uh, means time spent recovering from an illness or medical treatment. Recuperation. A period of convalescence. Convalescence. See. Convalescence. Convalescence. A seamstress is hard to at work to prepare appropriate clothes for her as we speak. I lent her old clothes of mine for now since she remains frail and emaciated. There's not wrong with sisters sharing each other's clothes, is there? Perhaps my humble taste and attire caused a misunderstanding of sorts. Isn't that right, my dear sister? What she's trying to do is as clear as day. But I should play along for now. Of course, sister. This dress is much prettier than I deserve. <laughs> I had no idea that it was your old dress, but I've quite... I've taken quite a liking to it. If I'm going to make a point, <laughs> this is the least I can do to be heard. <laughs> My goodness, look at her... Chemis. Chemise. What is could these words? Oh, look, those stains are just like the ones on my kitchen maid's uniform. Oh, yes, quite. They're almost yellow from the stains. 
I wouldn't even let my maid wear those. <laughs> Does Cardinal de Mer treat his daughter as lesser than a common maid? Uh, uh, Miss Isabella, you said they were your hand hand me downs, did you not? <laughs> oh, well, that's um. Silence, everyone. I have a question for the Cardinal's eldest daughter. About Miss Ariadne's... Sh oh my gosh, I say it. Chemise? Chemise. Chemise. Did it once belong to you as well? Um, I, I mean... Enough. You may return home with your eldest. Miss de Rossi. She's being openly treated like father's mistress. I hope you're feeling humiliated, Lucrecia. On that note, escort the cardinal's middle daughter and have her change into a proper chemise. Yes, your majesty. Pardon? Does she mean me? This is the way to the Queen's palace. As Chassere's fiance, I became extremely familiar with the palace over the nine years that I stayed here. I wish I could forget all about him. Boom. Huh? Ow. Oh. Greetings, Your Highness. Alfonso? Ariadne. To be continued. Okay. Sorry guys for mispronouncing some of these words. I never seen these words before, so I have to stop quite often to Google them. Alfonso? Ariadne. Hmm? Hmm. Alfonso, you're a prince? Oh, I mean Miss Demare. I have you no, uh, no manners? This is the sole scion of His Majesty King Leo the Third and Her Majesty Queen Margaret. His Highness Prince Alfonso de Carlo. I insist you observe the proper etiquette. Matron Carla. There's no reason why the daughter of a cardinal ought to obey the Queen's maid. Except Matron Carla is one of the Queen's Margaret's most trusted personal attendants. In other words, the Queen will hear of everything that happens here. Your Highness, I beg your forgiveness for my ignorance and impertinence. Carla, I intentionally didn't tell her. You, you see, Ariadne here is a friend of mine. A, f a friend? Your Highness, that is highly irregular. She sees me as who I am. No more, no less. So what is she if she's not a friend? A person's station in society determines their role as well as their worth, your highness. Not to mention their inheritance nature. Inherent nature. You must not forget that you're the prince of this kingdom. He's a very picture of rebellious youth. Just look at him out in annoyance and boredom. It seems that even as even a well-raised prince is susceptible to the turmoils of adolescence. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> uh, uh, Ariadne, come. Your Highness, where are you going? Your Highness! <laughs> Huh? That was quite the reaction, your highness. <laughs> Come now. Call me Alfonso. I wouldn't dare commit such a grave offense, your highness. Ugh. Please, that's quite enough. 
We didn't run away just so you could keep calling me your highness. <laughs> In that case, <laughs> why don't we come up with secret nicknames for each other? I'm the queen in this life, episode 8. Uh, uh. Hmm? A nickname? Surely that would be even more impudent than addressing me by my name. You're certainly a bold one, Miss Aaron. Hmm. But if I keep addressing you by your name, everyone would realize your true identity eventually. To an adolescent youth who wishes to be seen as his own person. That's certainly true. The mere suggestions of surrepti- sur Jeez. Surreptitious. Why does this read love using big words? I'm gonna try. Surreptitious. Surreptitious connections. Shoot me now would prove far too tempting to resist. Fine. Have it your way, then. Excellent. Then how does Al sounds? Boring. Uh, what about Fonzo? It sounds made up. Uh, he's so fussy. <laughs> well, then, um... So. Dear A, <laughs> uh. <sighs> the art is so beautiful. By the way, I've kept another secret from you. What is it? It's likely that my mother called you here today because of me. I told her about our encounter at Rambulet, you see. Her Majesty is informed of everywhere I go and everyone I met. I imagine she was particularly intrigued that I met a young lady for once. He seemed so cheerful and carefree that I thought he was oblivious. But he has a surprising grasp of what's going on. Interesting. Of course, I realize that she watches over me from a place of care and concern. And yet... Sometimes it feels... <sighs> Forgive me. I didn't mean to bore you with my troubles. <laughs> uh, let us change the subject. Huh? It must be frustrating. Uh, I'm sure Matron Carla must be looking for me. I'd rather avoid her wrath. <laughs> it seems Her Majesty wishes to bestow a dress upon me. Until next time. Uh, he's blushing. Manner of Cardinal de Mer. Miss de Rossi! Miss de Rossi! How dare she treat me like a mistress in such a public manner? That uppity foreigner. How dare she insult a pure-blooded Etruscan like this? Etruscan. That filthy wench from Gallico. Ugh. Ooh, she looks scary there. Might be a thumbnail. She broke so many things. I'm home, mother. Mother, mother, you call me at least have the decency to spare me your two-faced lies, girl. And that chemise, I suppose that was another one of your little ploys. She may be dreadfully dense, but her intuition is as sharp as a knife. Of course not, mother. I'm hurt that you'll think so. Truthfully, that's the only chemise... Chemise? chemise that i own who in charge of dressing this girl 
turn her room upside down and make sure there are no other chemises. Scream and shout all you want. You won't find another chemise, no matter how hard you comb through my room. Now, how should I shut her loud, ignorant mouth next time? Ma'am? Uh, what? I know who the real culprit is. Lady Lucrecia bid you to dress to dress to leave the manor. The palace sent a carriage for you, my lady. Would you care to try on my outfit for fun, of course? Oh no, I forgot to threaten Maleta into silence. <gasps> to be continued. Oh, okay, so I'm sorry guys. I keep on mispronouncing some of these words, even though I just googled it and like, okay, another word. And then I forget it <laughs> soon after. Oh, this read just annoys me with the big words. It's just, I get it. I should brought, I should add more words into my vocabulary. It's great. But oh my God, it's just so, it's ugh, annoying. Anyway, so here's a breakdown. She is very clever in the second life, okay? She is no how, she knows how to play all these chess moves to honestly win Alfonso's affection. And I can tell, like, she's kind of annoyed with him. But she's she's knowing to win his affection and not ruin that. And trying to be in favor of the queen. And it's kind of funny. She knows how to spite her, her half-sibling and her stepmother. So, oh my goodness. Like, <sighs> Isabella's mom is Lucrezia. She is hard pill to swallow like she's so mean <laughs> but i'm kind of glad that you know ariadne know how to provoke her and get her to like <laughs> you know um losing her cool but crap what is going to happen now like she's about to get caught Mm, we shall see. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed the way I read and reacted to this webtoon, feel free to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, share, comment, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!